Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at more power series, specifically problems that look like this. So let's say they give you a function f of x equals 8 over 1 minus x. And the question goes something like, turn this function into a power series and write the interval and radius of convergence. And you look at this and you think to yourself, this isn't a power series, this is just a, a normal function. Well, the thing is, this can be turned into a power series, specifically the geometric form, because let me remind you, the sum of a geometric series is a over 1 minus r. So in other words, in this problem, a equals 8 and r would just be x. And so therefore, you can actually write it as a geometric series, which hopefully we remember how to write a geometric series. It's a times r to the n minus 1, assuming the series starts at n equals 1. So then this can be written as the power series, series from n equals 1 to infinity, of 8 times x to the n minus 1. And there, now it's a power series. And because it's a power series, I can find the radius and interval of convergence very easily. All I have to do is say r is x, and the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. So in this case, the absolute value of x must be less than 1. And then whenever I want to get rid of this absolute value sign, I'm going to sandwich it in between negative 1 and positive 1, like this. And then there, there's my interval convergence, although I'll write it in interval notation. Negative 1 to positive 1, that's it for the interval. We don't need to check the bounds like we would for a ratio test power series, because geometric never includes the endpoints negative 1 and positive 1. And then for the radius of convergence, this is really easy, it's just 1. And that's because the radius of convergence is always the high number minus the low number over 2. In other words, 1 minus negative 1 over 2, which gets you 1. Or you can get it faster just by saying this power series is centered at 0, because it's smack dab in the middle of negative 1 and 1, which means the radius will always be the number right here, in this case, 1. So that's it for the first one. Now let's do another one. Let's say this time I have f of x equals negative 1 over 2 plus x squared this time. So this one's less friendly because if I want the form a over 1 minus r, this is not the form I want. This 2 stops it from happening. So what am I going to do? I'm going to factor out a 2 out of my denominator. So it will be 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared over 2. That's what you have to do. And then even this 2 can be moved up to the numerator as negative one-half over one plus x squared over two. And the reason why I write it like this is because now I clearly see a is negative one-half and r is negative x squared over two. Why negative? Because it's supposed to be one minus r. If it's plus, that means r is gonna end up being kind of like a double negative to make that positive. So here's my value for a and r. If I wanna write it as a series then, series from n equals one to infinity, of negative one-half times negative x squared over two to the nth power. And once I'm here, I get to say r is negative x squared over two, and to solve this, I have to say the absolute value of negative x squared over two has to be less than one. The good news is the negative sign goes away because of the absolute value part. And once I get here, I need to again sandwich it in between negative one and positive one. Now I have to solve for x, that means multiplying both sides by 2. So negative 2 less than x squared, less than 2. And then here's the interesting thing. I have to take the square root of both sides. Now you can't take the square root of a negative number, so that side gets eliminated. But because whenever you take a square root, it's technically plus or minus, here's what ends up happening every time. You are now sandwiched in between this guy, negative root 2 less than x, less than positive root 2. So let me erase this just a little bit so it's less cluttered. We went from here, I took the square root of everything, this side canceled, the plus or minus the square root meant the negative square root went over here and the positive square root went over here, and again I'm sandwiched in between them. My interval of convergence will be negative root two to positive root two like this, and the radius, the shortcut would just tell us it's root two because we're centered at zero again. So there, that's interval and radius of convergence for this one as well. Now the only other problem I'm worried that you would see is something like this where they give you the first few terms of the series. Let's say it's 2 
minus x plus x squared over two minus x cubed over four plus dot dot dot. And the question again would be find the radius and the interval of convergence and write this as a power series. So first I would say that this is in the geometric form where I'm not sure if you're familiar with this or not, but the geometric form when you write it out as terms is a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus dot dot dot. Meaning the first term is a, a is just two, and if I want to find out what r is, I just have to take this term, negative x, and divide it by the first term, two. In other words, I'm saying r equals negative x over two, and that's true. So now the series is equal to n equals one to infinity of two times negative x over two to the nth power. And if I want to find the interval and the radius again, you should probably try it on your own at this point. I think you can do it. So pause the video, give it a try, and unpause it when you're ready to see my solution. So here's what we do. It's all about r, which is negative x over two. I'm saying the absolute value of r has to be less than one. So in other words, absolute value of negative x over two, less than one. Again, negative sign goes away because of the absolute value. And now I'm gonna sandwich it between negative one and positive one to get rid of the absolute value. And finally, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. Negative two, less than x, less than positive two. So there, there's my interval of convergence, negative two to positive two with parentheses, and the radius of convergence will just be positive two. And there we go. So that's all the problems I wanted to look at today. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.